Um, welcome to the NLA and uh, to the future of London's public realm um, and the introduction of um, part two of the Mayor's Design Advisory um, uh, publications on public realm and good growth. Um, I'm Selena Mason, board director of LDA Design. Um, but that's relatively recently. Prior to that, I was at the LLDC and ODA and before that, Cape. So I think probably the last 20 years of my professional life, when I think about it, the thread that has run through it is very much about the public realm and witnessing the changing way in which public realm has been delivered in London, the improvements we've made, and indeed, obviously, all the challenges that we're still facing uh, in delivering it. So it's a very welcome and timely report here, particularly as we're about to witness the transition to a new mayor and uh, and making a case for how the public realm is benefiting us in many, many respects is, uh, is very, very important. I look forward to hearing more about it today. Just to introduce the NLA briefly, many of you know, as uh, I'm sure you know, independent forum for discussion, debate, and information about architecture, planning, development, and construction in the capital. The core mission is to bring people together to shape a better city, which uh, obviously we're participating in today. Um, before I hand over to Pam Alexander, who's uh, Chair of Park Covent Garden Market Authority and a member of um, MDHE, to introduce the, the um, programme, uh, I'd just like to say thank you very much for coming today, 8.30 in the morning, and to give an hour of your time to this conversation. And also to thank you both now, who have been sponsoring this series of events, so thank you very much. Pam, can I introduce you? Have I got my own? You have got your own. Is this one working? Can you hear? It's on? Can you hear? Yes, good. Okay. I'll walk to the middle. Um, well, good morning, everyone, and, and thank you. Well done for being here. It's fantastic to have such a great turnout. We had a brilliant turnout last week uh, for the first report, and we're hoping for the same on the next two Fridays. Fridays in February are about good growth in London. Um, just a, a word more about the Mayor's Design Advisory Group. It basically is what it says on the tin. Um, we're a group of varying planners, designers, architects, policy makers who have been drawn together to advise the mayor on aspects of the built environment and good design in the built environment in London. We do thematic reviews like this. We get involved in individual topics. For example, we saw the new Crossrail trains. Um, and we get involved also in place-based reviews, which we follow up with some of the um, areas that we work with. Um, I particularly want to uh, mention Daniel, Daniel Moylan and Pat um, Brown, who couldn't be here today, um, but who have been absolutely critical to making the Mayor's Design Advisory Group effective um, and ensuring that we are all advocates for great design in London. Uh, this series of four books and studies it is about opening up the debate on what growth should look like, what it might look like, what it could look like if we're not careful. Um, as London grows to 10 million by 2030 and 11 million by 2040, possibly within its boundaries. And that's the proposition that we've taken. If it is within its boundaries, what might it look like? Uh, of course, there are alternatives, which others are exploring, and we're very keen that those might be explored in this debate too. But the first report, um, which was published last week, was about more homes, more jobs, more need for infrastructure. What is it we need? Where will it be? How will we do it? What will it look and feel like? And if you haven't, get hold of the report which was published. I think it's a really interesting stimulant. There are some very, very fascinating pieces of data in here. And if it inspires you, go along to the Big Bang Data exhibition at Somerset House, where you can actually play with the Future City Catapults model, which enables you to make the choices, housing or jobs, brownfield land or not, which bit of infrastructure for energy, for transport and all of that, and you'll then see what your London looks like decades away. It's also a fascinating exhibition generally on digital technology and how it might apply to our lives in the future. Today we're going to be talking about the second report in the series, Public London, about public spaces. Those aspects of the character of London that make it so attractive, that make it livable, that make it a joy to be in, or that can make it, a barrier to us enjoying our own lives. Um, we're looking at internal and external public space. We're looking at private and public public space. We're looking at the glue that binds places together, the tissue which either binds them or separates them. And I think what's rather exciting is that we all know how important public space is now. I really don't believe that was true 
10 years ago, but I do believe it's now in the DNA of people who think about place to realise how crucial public spaces are. And if I think about the organisations I'm involved with, Design Council UK has been doing place-based reviews for several years now, and the spaces around buildings are as important in looking at those places as the buildings themselves. But I was particularly interested going to uh, one of the Independent Transport Commission seminars to discover that transport engineers too have discovered the value and the importance of attractive public space. Um, we are at Covent Garden Market Authority, as well as building a new consolidated fruit, vegetable and flower market, looking to create a 21st century food quarter for London in the space that will link the new tube station at Nine Elms through a new street market for London, past our flower market and our offices, which we hope will be a hub for food businesses, through the rail arches, which will be opened up to the public for the first time in my lifetime, into the linear park and the river. Whatever you think of the development there, it's the development there that has funded not just the, nine, uh, the Northern Line extension, but also the new public spaces that will be created. What should they look like? How will they feel? How do we make them feel coherent but characterful? New neighbourhoods for London, not just sterile spaces. And Peter will be telling you some of the things that we've been thinking about in an evidence-based look at what have we done to make good public spaces and why aren't all our public spaces good and what do we need to make sure that they are into the future. Next Friday, uh, we'll be looking at the third report on ageing population. 15% uh, of London's population is over 65. Um, quite a lot of the Mayor's Design Advisory Groups heading in that direction, I suppose we all are. Um, and 20% will be over 65 of a much larger population, so maybe 1.5 million people over 20, uh, 65 in 2030. We're going to be active, we're going to be part of the leadership of London, we're going to be pretty demanding, and we're going to be contributing. What do we need? whatever our levels of activity, income and ability. That's what the third report will look at. And the fourth report, fundamental to all of them, will look at the skills and capacities in the private and the public sector which enable us to create good growth. And without those skills and capacities, there's no chance of getting any of the rest. It will look at positive planning and master planning, urban design, inclusivity and sustainability, and what we do in place shaping to create character and opportunity. And of course the interrelationships between all these four reports are obvious but need to be pulled out and that's something which I know will be happening as they're followed up. So my main other purpose is to thank all of the people who've been involved. Um, first and foremost, the <coughs> lady who brought you here this morning, and particularly Peter Murray, who has been hugely energetic in making sure that the whole series is the success that I think you will find in these booklets. And David Taylor, who's also been involved as our editorial support. Daniel Moylan, who has been a very, very active person involved in design for many years, but also a very active chair, determined that the Mayor's Design Advisory Group should not just be a talking shop, but should have real purpose and real outcomes and real advice to give. A passion for London, I think, drives him to that. And the similar passion for London in Pat Brown has made sure that these have been delivered and that our meetings have been purposeful and that our outcomes have been, I hope you will find, provocative. We don't all agree with everything in all of these reports, and I don't suppose you will either, but what we want is a debate about them. I'd also like to thank the GLA Regeneration team, without whom none of this would happen. They've been hugely committed, really enthusiastic, and have managed to help us to produce all of this. And they've made sure... With, along with Daniel, that the Mayor has listened to some of the things we've said, done some of the things we've said. We want these, these reports both to recognise the success in placemaking and public space making of the last two decades, but we also want it to be heard by the potential mayoral candidates, and we hope very much to influence the Mayor of the future. We also hope they will recognise the positive context in which they'll be working because of all the work that's been done so far. So as I've said, we don't all agree with everything in all the reports, we do all agree with quite a lot of it, um, and we all agree that the debate is absolutely crucial, so we welcome all your contributions. And Peter will now take you through the second report, which we worked on, looking at high quality public space and what that means, using some of the evidence from the improvements of the last couple of decades, 
looking at the major challenges we now face with unprecedented growth, growth levels and major funding challenges, and thinking about whose space it is, what works best for everyone, streets as places too, and increasingly that's the way they're being seen, and the priorities for future investment and underpinning context. So over to you, Selena, to introduce the rest of the morning. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pam.